Hi there, this is Samantha Newark, and I'm probably best known as the voice of Jem and Jerrica Benton in the truly, truly, truly outrageous cartoon series, Jem and the Holograms, and also Ariel and Elise Presser in the original Transformers cartoon. So if you're an 80s kid, I think you're in the right place. You are watching In Conversation with Amber, the fangirl, ATF. Hi guys, Amber here. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. My guest today is a fellow Brit like me. Um, you might not hear it in her voice much, but she was born in England. She was Wimbledon, w -w 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 where the Wombles are from, of course. Um, and then raised in Essex and then moved to America. And here she is now, a singer, a songwriter. She was the voice of Elise Presser and Ariel, the younger version of Elisa One in the original G1 Transformers series. Um, and the voice of Jem in Gem and the Holograms, the original cartoon, and Jerrica. Was what's her last name? Jerrica Jerrica Benton. Jerrica Benton, that's it. Jerrica Benton, yes. Wow. Emmett Benton's daughter. <laughs> wow. And yes. you've got a, you've got a new album coming out. I can't remember what what's the name of your I do. New album? I, I have it right here. Oh, oh hologram isn't that cool hologram 2.0 it's the dance remix album to the hologram album that i put out in 2017 and it's finally here because uh it was supposed to come out in 2020 and then of course the whole world is on fire so that oh, didn't yeah, happen much. yeah <laughs> and we almost didn't do it this year but then i was like you know let's let's infuse this craziness with some dance music yeah. and share we our need to with we need to party our socks off, raise our frequency. Yay. So we figured a dance album was the way to do it. So yeah, every song that we Good did is you. dance remixed. Plus wow. an extra bonus one. Yeah. Wow. My guest so. is Samantha Newark. Yes. Hello, so, everybody. Did, I, did like, I say your last name right? Newark. You did. Yeah, Newark. Like like Newark, New Jersey, strangely enough. <laughs> ah, and Newark in Nottingham yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, well, I should actually start to say that instead, maybe. Newark, like Newark and Nottingham. Yeah, yes. well, when you're talking to a British person, if, well, right. okay, Newark if is I a did. small place in Nottingham, you know, it's a, I right. know there is a centre park, a little park there, but apart from that, I don't know anything else that's See, there. I learned something today, I did, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you mean, yeah. you, were, you, were, you were born in England, so I'd love to start off, like, yes. you were born in England, like, what was it like, I mean, what shows did you grow up with, because I believe, you. I, I know you said you moved to South Africa at the age of six, and then... Yes. And then you moved to America. So what? What would? Right. You, what shows did you grow up watching in England? Because you were born in 1967, I, so this was like the early 70s. Right. It was the early 70s. Yes. Yeah. So I grew up watching um, Blue Peter and uh, Doctor Who. The original. Do well, the Doctor Who. I don't know his name. I'm sure all you Who fans out there will know his name. The Doctor with the curly hair. And Tom the Baker. Scarf. Yes, that was my Doctor Who. And uh, so I grew up with Doctor Who. I grew up with um, the Wombles, of course, from Wimbledon. Uh, Rupert the Bear, Crystal Tips and Alistair. Oh, you're, you're, you're taking me back now because there was a right. Nick Jr. called Nick Jr. Classics and they'd air all these shows like Wombles, Crystal Tips and Alistair and everything yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, that was one of my favorites and it had no dialogue at all. It was just this kind of cardboard cutout girl very psychedelic you know and uh and this like uh clarinet music and I loved it loved it loved it it was like one of my favorites I did too. yeah it's it's so colorful and her yeah. dog and whatever mischief they would get up to yeah um what other yeah. shows did you watch um the Muppets and I think that was a really good thing for me it was the Muppet show so when I moved to Africa because you, you not only are, I mean, it was six and a half when I moved. So you're leaving behind everything. Your childhood. <laughs> um, your, ch your childhood, basically. And then I do remember they had the Muppet Show on television in Africa. And then when I came to America, they had the Muppet Show. So that was like a through line for me for my childhood was, oh, thank goodness they have the Muppets, you know. Because love, who doesn't love the Muppets, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a huge part. And then Scooby-Doo, when I came to America, the Flintstones, Scooby-Doo, Huge Scooby Doo. We I had them in a, here in England as well. Very big here yeah. in England as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, that's just so cool. Like, you went from watching British media, like Chris Tips and Alistair, Wombles, yes. and then you went to working on Bobby Transformers with like Frank Welker, Peter Cole, and Frank Welker, Bloody Fred Jones himself, man. Crazy. Like, I know. Who I believe it. Like, ah, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. My, my dad, and it's a British expression, you probably will know it. He always said, my daughter landed with a bum and butter. Because I really did. When I first started doing um, 
when I first, when I got Gem, I had never done an animated anything. I'd done like a voiceover for a public service announcement or something. So to be able to book the lead in an animated cartoon series and then be able to jump ship to work on Transformers, you know, I've been in the business as a, as a professional singer since I was a little little thing and theater and all that kind of stuff. So it wasn't like I'd, I'd never done anything before, but still just what an amazing, <laughs> what an amazing opportunity, you know, to have been trusted with the lead in a show like that. Exactly. Um, and then for it to have, for it to still be, you know, in the pop culture has turned into like pop culture madness. It's, it's so cool. Exactly. Yeah. Like loved and appreciated still today. I mean, you were in the, yeah. the new gem film as a hairstylist, which is really cool. They brought you back right. for a little cameo. Yeah. A little cameo. That was, that was fun. I know the, the film wasn't as well received as everybody had hoped, but it was a lovely experience yeah. working I think on it. Was it. They were Audrey all... Peoples as yes. yeah, gem. Yeah. Yes, as Gem. She has a record coming out too. What oh, does she? Oh, I, wow. I just saw she shared something on Instagram, the gram at the Insta. So go check out Aubrey People's page because she's got a record coming out. I'll put a link to that as well. Yeah. I'm having a look at the cast list. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Ke- um, Haley Kiyoko, such a sweetheart. Yeah. She was lovely. She's she's done amazing with her music and saw her live in Nashville. She was so sweet. We went backstage and I was like, do you remember me? And she's like, oh, of course I remember you, your gem. <laughs> so that was nice. And it's not yeah, just, she's... I was going to say, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you're fine. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and as well in the film, um, you, you're, you're your hairstylist, Britta Phillips, who was the singing voice of the original gem as a stage yes. manager and gems creator, Christy Marks as Lindsay Pierce and Edson Rock for Rolling Stone. So at least they paid to know... the original series. Yes, they I, the cameos were great. They were really fun. And Christy Marks, that made me laugh out loud. She's awesome. I love Christy. She's great. Yeah. She's Mama Jen. I mean, she's the creator, you know. Yeah, and yeah. it's so cool. Like um that and Transformers women behind the same people, some by productions animated, like, you know, yeah. it's had yeah. similar cast members. You had Neil Ross, you had Kath Susie, Marlene Aragon, Charlie Adler, Desiree Gossip, Sue Blue. Goyeti. Yes. And All Sue Blue as well. Sue I've interviewed Blue. her. I've interviewed her. Oh, She's, she's lovely. Amazing. She's lovely. She's, she's really awesome. I hadn't seen her in like, oh my God, so many years since I'd done the show. We just, our paths had never crossed. And uh, I did BotCon, which was a Transformers. Sorry, I've got a little fan on me. It's blowing my hair in my mouth. Um, yeah, it was a Transformers convention that I did in like 2014. And she was there and it was, and my old agent was there who was, um, married to jack angel who played my dad on gem oh and obviously Lee jack thornton. angel yeah arlene Rest thornton was my agent. Angel. yeah yeah i'm so yeah, sad i'm so sorry would, that he passed away yeah i would see him all the time in the in back in the day when i would go audition for things at arlene's because you used to go before everybody had a home studio yeah and you'd go to your agent like say i'm coming in, gotta read for something at like one o'clock and so often he would be there he'd either be reading for something or just be there to see arlene and it was just like come here my daughter my daughter he used to call me because he played my dad i nearly yeah. got him for my show but obviously he was in very ill health so he wasn't able to yeah Bless him. yeah what a what a tremendous career you know, yeah, he was he Blitzwing, just... he was Ramjet in Transformers. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. He was Astro- yeah. No, he wasn't Blitzwing, that was Ed Gilbert. He was Astro Train. That's who he was. Astro Train. Thank you for keeping it straight because I just, I can't. Like, yeah, sorry. Just, Blitzwing just kind of slipped so out. I don't know why. Blitzwing so was much. Ed Gilbert. Oh, that's okay. a different person. Um, I'm having a look. Yeah, <laughs> Botcon. Wow. Yeah, Jack Angel, Steve yeah. Blue. And also, it had predominantly the Transformers Rescue Bots cast. So that's Steve Bloom, Professor China, Ilan Garfia. So I've also interviewed. Oh, and David K. went as well. I interviewed David yesterday. Oh my gosh, that's so strange. Yeah. And also, Syn- it's synergy. I know. I was going to say synchronicity. But Ooh, it's magic. It's, um, it's synergy. And then um, Morgan Lofting as well, Michael McConaughey, yes. Shannon McCain, Jason Marsden, you, Hal yes, Rail, Jason, and Amari Williams. Jason Marsden. Um, is it Jason Marston? Mars. He lives in Nashville. He lives in Nashville now, yeah. He lives in Nashville. He was on Actually, Transformers Rescue Bots. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people live in Nashville. Well, it's the entertainment industry here. So and now when you now that you can have a home studio, you can kind of live wherever you want. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean so. Steve Bloom now lives in Hawaii. Oh my god, good for him. Yeah, yeah. Good for him. That's a that's if you're gonna live somewhere, that's awesome. <laughs> oh yeah. And I don't find it really cool how like his wife is Mary Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who is a voice director. She was previously married to voice act 
voice actor Darren Norris. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so she's like already in it and like Darren yeah. voiced Knockout in Transformers Prime. Steve voiced Starscream. So it's like Mary jumped from Knockout to Starscream. It's like That's amazing. Really cool. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Did you meet any of the other people at Botcon 2014? I'm guessing that you well you did, of course. I did. I did. I mean, we were all very busy. It was an it was an amazing experience. My in fact, my dad um who's passed he he was a photographer and i was like dad you've got to come to the transformers convention there's going to be the most amazing cosplay there so he bought his camera with him and i've got these great pictures i'm so glad people took pictures of him too because he was not a very tall man and i've got a picture of him standing next to like some ginormous incredible transformers cosplay you know that lights up and yeah, the whole thing. And yeah. he was just he had a ball that was an amazing show yeah and then we did like a cold read with everybody, um, they they hushed, they huddled us backstage um, at the show, and then they just handed out scripts, and they were like, "You're going to be this person, you're going to be this person." I had no idea what I was doing. Nobody did, so we all just like read through this script uh, live in front of everybody. So it lives on the internet somewhere. Well, that's cool. And um, yeah, and then everybody signed my script for me afterwards. So that was that was very cool. Aww, yeah, that was so neat. Nice. It was a great experience. I'm having yeah. a look now because one of my friends went to BotCon 2014. I'm not sure if you remember him or not. You might not uh, know. There's a lot of things from Auto Assembly. Oh, hang on. BotCon Universe. Uh, hang on. I think I may have found. Fa- okay. He has a photo. <laughs> he has a photo with Jack Angel, Hal Rail, and Susan Blue. I don't think there is one with you. Yeah. I, I mean, he probably has met you. His name is Raymond Franzman. Gosh. I I pr- probably met him. He's I from the Netherlands. Faces. He's from Amsterdam. He's got gotcha. long gray hair. He's yeah. Wow. Yeah. I pro- if I saw a picture of him, I probably would be like, oh my god, I remember. Um, there may be a picture of him in amongst my pictures on my on my maybe. official website. Yeah, because I have all my is shows with Susan Blue. Oh, thank you that there. There he is. Like, try and focus mm. that. There we go. Oh, that's a great picture. Yeah, I don't I, know why he that's... looks familiar. I just forgive me because I meet so many people, and somebody told me once because I feel bad when I don't necessarily remember somebody and they remember me, and it's like awkward, you know. But um, it's not normal, I don't think. For, as far as like act, people, when we go to shows, we meet so many people. It's not a normal thing in life, I think, to meet that many people. So it's hard. It's hard to keep it all straight, but. That's why I have photos and, and I see I can reflect on them because just so many lovely moments with yeah. so many incredible people that I never would have gotten the chance to meet. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to write. OK, here's a good question. I've been wanting to know this now. Of course, you were on Transformers as well. I mean, you were about 17 or 18, which is my age at the, at the time where you would have been on Transformers. Right. I was 18. So I was probably closer to 19 when i did transformers i think around 86 it was yeah 80, 85 yeah and i'm having a look, okay i'm having a look at the 18. cast and yeah i mean judging from you there was a lot of really good people in the studio you had chris latter john stevenson frank welker um corey burton um laurie fazzo peter cullen and yeah what was it like working with all of those guys? Well, not to dash anybody's, um, you know, I can't even think of the word, but I didn't get to record ensemble with Transformers. Really? I recorded, yeah. I recorded ensemble for Gem, but because they were guest spots, sometimes they would, they would schedule it. Um, they have to try and schedule it. So sometimes it would be on the tail end of a session and it would just be Wally. Wally Burr, the director, yeah. and myself. So I didn't get to record ensemble with everybody, which was a bummer because recording ensemble is incredible. It's amazing to be a part of all of that. But yeah, so I mean, I, I kind of did what is mostly done in voiceovers where you don't necessarily get to work with people, but then you end up in the same incredible projects together. So that was my experience of working on the Transformers. Um, wow. But then Jam, I was in the studio with Charlie Adler and Sue Blue and uh, Smith Harris. What was it Harris, like? Because you were only but... 18. Yes, I, 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 I'm, yes. I'm nearly 18 myself, but I still think I'm right. 18. So 
yeah and right right small brick girl it's... in a big studio wow right tell me about uh, that. yeah how did this little girl from england end up like in a studio with all of these amazing people i mean it was it was wonderful everybody was charming and lovely to me because i was the youngest member in the cast and they obviously knew that i was a professional and that i was gonna bring it and everything um I didn't necessarily hang out with anybody afterwards. Like I've heard stories of like Patricia and different people spending time outside of gem, but nobody wanted to hang out with an 18 year old when they're in their thirties. I'm like, you know, the kid basically. Oh. Um, so, but it, what a thrilling experience just to be able to go. And uh, I've talked about this in panels before gem really kind of gifted me my, my independence as a young woman because I got my first apartment and I bought a car and I painted my apartment lilac <laughs> and seafoam which were 80s colors wow and uh it, it was like it was literally like it gifted me um my initial independence out into the world I moved out of my parents house basically and then I had this incredible job which didn't even feel like a job going to the studio and working on gem doing something that was that I never expected that I do because I sang my whole life and then suddenly I'm I'm acting you know I'm an I'm, I'm a voice actor and <laughs> it was just incredible journey yeah 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 and after after I mean during gem you know so much of the work is is not animation it's uh commercials like did tons of commercials like voiceover for commercials and I, I did a, like a McDonald's commercial where I was like the McDonald's counter girl and pay less shoes and all of these different things. So, you know, you'd be shopping at the mall and suddenly my voice would come on. You wouldn't necessarily know it was Jem, but it was me. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Sorry, we're steam down the zone up there and I heard the house phone ring and I was like, uh, who's going to answer that? Or should I just jump up and run? Right, right. <laughs> um, yeah. Somebody right. loves you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Raymond's messaged me back. He said, "Yes, I, I, he did meet you. Had a nice conversation with you as well. Showed her my vault book, which had just come out. She told me she wanted to buy the book as well after seeing all the information in it, including the picture of Ariel. Um, and she told me all kinds of little stories about her time on Transformers and Gem, like how the guys would tell dirty jokes to try and make her blush during recording sessions. They would, they would, would they? Yeah, like it was deliciously." adult at a lot of the a lot of the sessions and you know I was a very good girl like kind of sheltered in a lot of ways and uh -huh. I would just sit back and I couldn't I couldn't believe that they were allowed to, like like this happened in sessions but I mean it was it, we we would get in trouble for laughing you know and everybody had to kind of round everybody back you know just calm down everybody we got to get back to work type of thing yeah but um yeah, Raymond, hi. Sorry, I, I could kind of see a picture online, so so forgive me for not remembering right away, but that does sound very familiar. I'm sure I have a picture of you on my uh, Transformers on the BotCon thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to find this one thing real quick. I'm just trying to... Hmm, where is it? I'm just trying to... Oh, right, hold on. Sorry, I'm just trying to find someone on uh, this... On, um, what's it called? Just this website real quick. They've just posted... Yeah. I just follow that and let's pause that and hope gotta love technology let's have a pause <laughs> of that yeah it, it is i am like multitasking at the moment it's like wow it's crazy honestly um hmm. yeah okay um yeah enough about that anyway i'm going off task i'm so sorry <laughs> no, it's um, okay <laughs> um so here's a good question i'd like to ask you how yeah. come you i mean you're a singer now but how come yeah. you didn't do the singing voice for gem i get asked that a lot so when i initially got the call from arlene you know sam you've got a, an audition at wally Bar studios like one o'clock or whatever i went there and she said it was for a rock singer and i was like oh my gosh amazing rock singer with a secret identity oh my gosh that's right up my alley so I just <laughs> assumed that I had got the audition because I also sang um and then when I went there um I was just auditioning for the speaking roles and I think I asked about the singing and they said you have to talk to your agent and long story short the singing was a whole machine that it was already cast in New York oh, wow. and none of us that were reading for the voice actor roles um, had any idea. So there were obviously 
the singers in New York, a lot of them were voice actors and a lot of the voice actors also sang, but it was a, two separate machines. So they were literally matching our speaking voices to the already cast singing voices, ah, I but see. I didn't know that initially. And then it was just like this seamless thing that nobody knew, you know, they just assumed that it was one person, um, you know, cause like Patricia, the voice of pizzazz, Ellen, uh, Ellen Burnfield is a singing voice of pizzazz and, you know, Britta Phillips is a singing voice of gems. So they matched us really perfectly mm-hmm. and nobody knew, um, for the longest time until the internet <laughs> came yeah, along and them. people started asking questions and finding out who we were. So, and then, uh, someone called Lonnie Groves was the singing voice of Stormer. And then obviously yeah. Susan Blue was our speaking voice. Yes. Yeah. Oh, really cool. And on and on it went. And super, super talented, talented people. Ari Gold, who we just lost actually in February. He, um, a lovely human being. Yeah, my album's actually dedicated to Ari because he introduced me to my remix producer, Jared Jones. Aww, so nice. the album is for Ari Gold. But Sir Ari Gold, as a kid, like literally sang on anything that you can think of, like all the commercials in America. Um, you know, My Little Pony, just like everything this kid sang on everything. And he was the singing voice of Bonnie and Jen. So he wow. was the, he played the female singing voice of Bonnie That's as so well. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And went on to have like this incredible um, career. He was like an LGBT uh, queer artist, uh, dance artist, and has wow. a bunch of records. He's fabulous, like fabulous. You guys need to check him out. Ari Gold. Yeah, Gold Nation. Yeah, yeah he's awesome. I definitely will. Wow. Yeah. So, Smartha, what are you? What are you up to nowadays? So we just launched Hologram 2.0, and that's been nobody really knows what goes into putting a record out there. It's quite quite a journey. Quite a journey. I was up for the challenge, but I was just like, wow. <laughs> I hadn't put an album out since 2017, and it was a lot. But but it's done, and uh, yeah, I'm just I'm guesting on different projects um i just did a cameo and a documentary for this wonderful band called hyperbubble who have a whole history with gem back in the day um yeah that is a whole thing so they did a remix they contributed a remix on my album they remixed hologram so it's remixed twice on my record yeah so i did a cameo and they're doing a documentary and uh i just did something for um project echo which is uh an anime feature film that came out in the 80s it's kind of very uh there are a lot of hardcore fans for project echo and i sang the theme song and i sang uh on the soundtrack and uh they're doing a blu-ray version so they got all the cast back together and we just did a behind the scenes interviews all these years later of all of us so we wrapped that and um and i'm just knocking out lots of auditions like we all do in the voiceover industry in my little home studio that I have now. And, um, yeah. So just chugging along. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Essentially. Wow. I was going to ask, are you ever going to return to cartoons? Cause you really, your your only credited roles on behind the voice actors are gem and Ariel. Right. Those were the major things I know. And people are like, what happened? Like, where did you go? And, so the long, the, the short of it is, is that I have been a singer, professional singer for, since I was eight. <laughs> I made my first record when I was eight. And really? I, wow. yeah, yeah. Called um, Jimmy Jimbo. <laughs> <laughs> and I did a tour it all over Africa, promoting this little record with oh, um, wow. um, on the meet the stars tour. So it was a bunch of South African artists um, and me. That's and I so was like cool. eight. Yeah. And I uh, did, a bunch of stuff when that's when I really really started singing when I was a kid um but uh I can't remember what we were saying anyway I don't remember I lost track of my thought but yeah I've just lost track too but (laughs) (laughs) oh no it's been a long winding road oh I'm trying to think what was it oh man Hmm. Uh, we were talking about something yeah we I, I it just it just was just weird out everything just escaped from our minds so quickly right and just delving back into my story oh yeah well I asked, like, I asked what gosh. do you do I asked what are you doing nowadays I think yeah you said you, right, you've done then, hologram um, right mm-hmm. I can't I remember. So I'd gone on a tangent and it'll come back yeah it'll, it'll, yeah 
it will come back yeah. <laughs> yeah well that was so odd though like you know you just you're just talking about someone and then just a few seconds later you just forget what you were talking about right you're like because i because i was referencing something to come back to it to circle back and i just just couldn't circle back yeah it's things. something about you'd been a prof oh yeah what are you up to nowadays you don't do cartoons anymore because you've been a professional singer you've been a singer since eight thank you thank you I just, I just had to reach out steps. thank you yeah so you know it it's it was difficult in los angeles once the residuals ran out which they do you know i managed to you make a go of it for quite a while but um it came to the point where I was so focused on my music and my songwriting and I was in and out of lots of bands and I was doing a ton of session work as a singer mm -hmm. and it was too much <coughs> to try and do both <coughs> and you need to have like a massive, massive commitment to one or the other. Yeah. And I've, I, you know, I was first and foremost a musician. And, and so I really, really, really in the nineties, I was just like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm following my bliss and uh, just started writing songs and performing everywhere and doing a ton of stuff like music wise. And uh, it was kind of hard, hard to serve two masters. So kind of one, one of them had to go. I think maybe if I had given up on the music and focused on the, the VO, it could have been a different story, you know, but that, that was my choice back then. And, uh, and I don't regret it. You know, I don't regret it. I've done so many wonderful things that I never would have gotten to do. So I just love music so yeah, yeah so that's 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 why um and it's a very 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 competitive industry and uh and i knew at one point a lot of voice actors survived this and went on to do a lot of major stuff but i was getting down to like the last two i remember getting down to like the last two for the spider-man cartoon and it was like i was auditioning with Drew Barrymore and Alicia Silverstone and wow. just getting really close to things. But, but I noticed like Alicia Silverstone's doing voiceovers now, like Drew's doing voiceovers. What's happening. Did I just hear Julia Roberts on a MasterCard commercial? Like all of that started to happen. I, Cause I think, yeah. you know, they started to realize the gravity of having familiar voices um, yeah. on their voiceover commercials. So they started paying people, you know, I'm sure Julia Roberts got a big payday for MasterCard, but normally that wouldn't have got, that would, would have gone to a, a working voice actor. So the old, the whole industry was starting to change. And, um, and I was like, but I can sing. <laughs> so, yeah. so I was like, I'm going to go do my singing. And, and that's what I did. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Unfortunately. And now you can see like, so, so many of the, uh, the films are all celebrities. And yeah, I was going to say animated. that's the case with yeah. many films nowadays yeah. and sometimes television right. shows. Yeah, exactly. It's Hollywood exactly. just don't care about voice actors anymore. It's just really sad. Well, you know, as, as I said before, like a, the bulk of the voice actor work is not so glamorous. It's stuff that maybe you you wouldn't hear. I mean, just or you you wouldn't know it was your favorite voice actor. It's, it's mostly like it's commercials. It's um industrials it's it's all kinds of nuggets of voiceover um which is fantastic because you can work you know you can do all kinds of stuff uh and then if you're lucky to get on a major show like you know i, I consider myself very blessed to have gotten on a major show like gem <clears throat> like that so so yeah and then then your life changes and you, you now i'm sitting talking to you yeah <laughs> gem so yeah, it's, it's such, there, there hasn't been a, the trajectory of my career has just been like, I mean, I, I moved to Dallas to go tour with this epic Pink Floyd tribute band that was like the longest running, it's the longest running Pink Floyd tribute act in uh, America. <clears throat> it's like a stadium show and we would sell out like the House of Blues venues all the way regionally from like Dallas down to New Orleans. And I was just like, do that so like I did and I went and toured with them for like three years and it was w probably one of the most amazing musical experiences of my life so my life has just I've had all of these nuggets of amazing stuff like living in LA and doing session work for Michelle Weiss Maslin who's a producer yeah. and a songwriter and <coughs> just getting to uh sing on all kinds of her songs that got yeah. put in all kinds of major film and tv projects and 
and singing on PlayStation games. And, oh, yeah, speaking of PlayStation, know. I just got out my uh, little PlayStation <laughs> stress controller. I, I use this just to fiddle with sometimes, you know. It's just right. like, oh, yeah, just pretend Good I'm for anxiety. Yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know. I have such bad anxiety, so, you know, stress toys is just the best way. Well, to you live it. in a mad, mad world. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. It's changed a lot since I was your age, that's for sure. Sadly, yeah. yeah. I just want to go back to the good old days, to be fair. I know. We will. We will. I may not Happy be exactly days are the way we think. Happy days are. And keep that in your consciousness, because that's what it's going to take. We can't all be miserable, because we'll never manifest like a beautiful new experience, you know? So we have to have hope. Yeah. yeah work toward it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, have you met Frank Welker? Or Peter Cullen? No. Um, I've been not. at shows with them and oh. not not been able to connect, <laughs> which, oh, is, which really sucks. In fact, the last time I was at a show and Wally Burr was there and we were, and I'm, it might've been Rhode Island Comic Con. It was a big show. We were both so busy and it was like, we were trying to connect. And I kept thinking to myself, this could be the last time I'd, I'll see Wally, you know, but we just didn't make it happen. And it was, it would have been the last time I saw him because he sadly passed um, maybe a year after that. Oh. But yeah, so I've been at shows with different voice actors from Jam and Transformers, but not, not necessarily had a chance to sit and have lunch uh, with them, you know? Yeah. But that's the nature of the biz, you know, you're there to work. So yeah. Are there any yeah. voice actors that you do keep in touch with by any chance? Um, well, I was very, I was really good friends with Patricia, uh, Albrecht, Alice Albrecht, who played the voice of Pizzazz, um, mm -hmm. in Gem, and she died, uh, Christmas day in 2019. Oh dear. And she was how I ended up in Nashville basically because, um, I was in LA and I didn't want to be there anymore. And she was like, you should come live in Nashville. Like the music scene here is great. And my husband, her husband at the time um, was a great guitar player, great songwriter. Why don't you come here and uh, just test it out? So I came during this festival called Tim Pan South and I booked some shows and he played guitar for me. And, um, and I drove around and I was like, this place is cool. Like I kind of had a vision. I'm sure a lot of people think of Nashville, Tennessee, like, you know, yeah. just not very, uh, not like Los Angeles, like the entertainment, the hip, slick and cool thing that I was kind of in since I was a kid. Uh, yeah. But it was very much alive with with so much um, so much going on here and just music peeps. You know, it's like you run into somebody uh, in Los Angeles and um, they're waiting tables and you're like, let me guess, you're an actor. And in <laughs> Nashville, it's like, let me guess, you're a songwriter, you're a singer, you're a guitar player. Like, yeah. it's, it's that here. And I loved that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Patricia, long answer to your question. Patricia was my friend here for, Aww. oh my gosh, for years. And mm -hmm. we were always at the, the friends, Friendsgiving, like the Thanksgiving celebration she'd have and bring, bring the, uh, the people that didn't have family here so we were always like thanksgiving and christmas parties oh. and their their mutual birthday parties together and so lovely memories oh, lovely gosh. lovely memories but um yeah i'm kind of I, i'm friends with uh with jason marsden mm -hmm. um he lives here in nashville we, don't, we mostly it's so funny we see each other at shows and yet we live like not that far from each other we don't see each other like oh town, really but we're usually seeing each other at shows yeah which is really funny so he was on the road as much as i was but, uh, <coughs> excuse the, me bless you bless i've never you. done that before i've never sneezed on an interview before well, Congratulations. Wow. Must be good luck. <laughs> Must be good luck. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm just having a look where Tennessee is on the map. I see. Oh. Yes. Wow, it's right. So it's more on, on the, the side. east coast, like southeast. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's nowhere near Los Angeles or anything. No. Like that. Wow. It's far, far, far away. Yes. Wow. It's beautiful here. It's really beautiful. Isn't it? Oh, wow. It gets bloody cold in the winter. Wasn't really prepared for that. Like growing up in Los Angeles, like, I need a but hat. Cold. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's cold. It's cold, it's cold over it here is. as well. I'm not. I'm not being yeah. funny. It is freezing. Yeah, yeah. My dad was like, "Why would you ever want to?" You know, he's like, "England bloody rains all the time. Why would you want?" It's part of the reason they moved to Africa. 
<laughs> it was sunny. It was beautiful, you know. I bet it was. I yeah, bet it was. they wanted some sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, and why a lot of the Brits go to like Mallorca for holiday. I've never Spain. been abroad. No. Well, you're still so young. You need I want to, to come to America. America's amazing. America's amazing. Yeah. I bet it There's is. There's so, so much here. Oh, my eyeliner is coming off. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, well, whatever will we do. <laughs> it still looks lovely. I like your cat eyes and your hair color is really cool, too. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. That's right. my friend Mia who did my makeup. So Good job. Really, yeah. yeah. She was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've just been reading. Um, and it says on Wikipedia, if you don't want to talk about this, that's completely fine. We can just move on. Yeah. On Patricia's Wikipedia page, it said, well, obviously, when she passed away, you were you were with her when she passed. Is that true? No, it's not totally true. I was I was there. Huh. I, her son, um, it was getting bad. And when she stopped eating and drinking, her son said, you need to come and say goodbye. So I drove to her house and... Uh, and said said bye yeah it was um yeah it it was a sad situation she was a light she was so fun she was a pistol she was hilarious and just like this little tiny little person and and yet pizzazz lived in there you know this incredible performance some of my favorite episodes are the ones where she is the focus because she is so good so good like you know she it's epic you cannot have gem without pizzazz you can't <laughs> yeah so i was very very lucky to have spent so much time with her in the last in the last years that she was here like super lucky yeah right. yeah well in that case i'll ask you a question and then i could go and i could go and ask that's a good go. idea right okay. Well, in that case, I'm going to ask you, would you like to see a Transformers crossover with Jem? Oh, that would be amazing. I've seen them done on comic books and Uh I've seen a ton of like incredible fan art. So it's like people are wanting it to happen, you know, but yeah, I think that would be, that'd be really cool. And I've also thought, because people have said, what crossover cartoon do you think would work really well with Jem? And I think Scooby-Doo, because Scooby-Doo, they're always going on these mad capers and so it was like the holograms and the misfits you know going through a haunted house and you know, like, i think a scooby-doo and gem yeah. mashup needs to happen yeah definitely. but definitely transformers yeah yeah transformers gi joe yeah. gem the lot that the whole really thing cool. yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> wow yeah there are a couple of really good um gem uh-huh. fan films yeah yeah there is so i've seen, I've seen yeah, them on youtube a few of them yeah seen, they're really good and then like the stop motion gem doll ones or the gem <laughs> somebody's like put together these epic using our voiceover these epic productions with the gem integrity dolls that are so good they're <gasps> hilarious no! so yeah you have to like gem doll gem doll videos i broke my gem controller doll. Oh no. oh no! I was just bending oh, it like that, and it's just bent in half. Oh no! Uh-oh. No! Wait, can, I, can I can I glue it together? I, don't, I, don't know. I wonder. Oh. I'm so sorry. It's, it's fine. It's, it's my fault. It's, I've been away too much. I've been away too much. Like God, I won't do that again. This is just the this is just the interview that where everything this literally just goes wrong. Like everyone's <laughs> talking, I break stuff. It's it's, oh. it's the misfits. They're exactly. up to no good. Miss the interview. I have a little squishy. Yes. I can just fill it. Luckily, it there you go. Hard, but no, that's a better one. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> I tend to fade a lot, quite a lot because my, I have autism. I'm not sure if you know, but I have no. autism. So, you know, I fiddle. Well, I think, you're, I think you're brilliant. And if fiddling helps, then you go for it. Yeah. A lot Thank of people you. do that. Those like little stress balls or it helps you kind of focus, like helps you focus your energy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I That's mean, good. Um, I have done a few voiceover roles myself. I mean, I'm not sure if you can see here. This is a coin operated helicopter ride. So, you know, those helicopter, those rides where you like, you put the money in and you move and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh my God. My voice is on one of them. That is amazing. I can't see where my iPad just died. And I tried to get one 
yesterday and they don't have any. So now I don't get my new one until January. Oh first my. world problems, right? But now I'm on my little phone right now. So I can't really, whoops, I can't really see your pictures very well. Behind. Well, in that case, I'll, I'll yeah. show you this one here, which is which yeah. is on my phone. Uh, let me find it. We scroll through so it. You here it is. Doing your voiceover like in your, in your rooms? In my bedroom with my Apple headphones. It wasn't in a professional studio or anything. But that's it. Oh my gosh. But wait, is that you? Yes. I have to put on my glasses. That is me. Oh, I see. So you're the voice for the helicopter thing? That's yes. so cool. What did you say? Um, well, I said the phrase is like, Helita Tower coming tower, up, up, and away. Rotor oh, power. And also, well, I, they were like, Rotor power, do it like Scrappy Doo saying puppy power. Who came up with the puppy power catchphrase? Frank Welker. I'm like, partially inspired my voiceover career i'm like Ooh. yeah oh that's amazing that's amazing okay, i need to stop around this minute. is just like oh man my mm. ocd not my ocd mm. like just you know i tend to fit my adhd just like all over the place right okay you've just got you've got a lot of lovely energy i'm, oh, I'm kind you. of jealous because i'm i'm a more i've always been more mellow and i've always like been envious of people that have a ton of energy because i go like i could get so much more done yeah exactly but we're I'm all the... we're all wired the way we are supposed to be you know yeah i see all serious yeah. interview I interviewers and stuff and then there's me just b absolute bomb pot that's fun that's great because yeah. life has got life has gotten way too serious yeah exactly it really it has we need to lighten up so this yeah. is awesome i agree definitely <laughs> yeah um yeah the final question i'd love to ask you um if Jem came back as an animated series would you like to do her voice as well as a singing voice i would love to do her speaking voice um everybody even though my voice is kind of fried right now but everybody's like oh my god sam you still sound exactly the same which i kind of feel like i do <laughs> so yes that would be a yes that would be hilarious um brita phillips is so good as a singing voice of Jem. i couldn't imagine anybody else being the singing voice of Jem, so I would have to definitely. I could. I could. I won't. I won't claim that platform in any way because she still gives me chills. Like I listen to the Jem theme song, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, when day. she sings, yeah. And only the beginning, which is one of my favorite Jem songs, it just gives me chills listening to her. She's just got that high, high belt. She's got a certain. There's a certain tone to Britta's voice that is just beautiful and has charisma and so yes to the voiceover and no to the to to the gem oh, singing thing very interesting if, if i were even it if i were even courted for it so yeah yeah of course <laughs> of course yeah 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 oh uh, sorry that was just a little fiddle thing i do i don't know yeah samantha it was so fun to talk to you even if i did fiddle faffle around quite a bit um where can we find you on social media i am super easy to find samantha newark.com <clears throat> has all the portals to all my social the gram of the insta and the facebook or whatever that's called now and just all of it is on there so youtube and uh and i have a brand new video i just put up a lyric video for the first um the first video off the new album, Hologram, oh. is it's a lyric video and it's up on my YouTube channel now. So I hope people will check it out. Leave a comment and a like. And if you like it, say something fun. And maybe I will say something. I'll comment on it right after this. Okay, awesome. Let me know what you think. I will do, cool. definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Lovely to talk to you all well, the way in well. England. Yep. Your home country. I know. I love yeah. it. So cute so. home. Thank you. Yeah. You are you get the home people. Thank you. Whether know, you be, if you're in it. UK or US. Thank I know. You for watching so much. Go check out um, some other everywhere. My hair has fallen out. I need to take it out and stuff like that. But, you know, well. <laughs> Show's over, Synergy. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, it feels like surreal. Like, oh, it's like I, I don't know how to describe my feelings right now. All I can just say is I'm really, 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 really happy. You are adorable. It's so lovely to like finally kind kind of meet you. And hopefully one day I'll get to meet you in person. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to ask you, have you ever been to England since you moved? I've not been back, which is really? insane. I still have a British passport. What am I waiting for? I'm waiting for things to calm down. 
Yeah, things, need to calm, things need to calm down a little bit. And then I would love, love, love to go to England because I literally have never met the Gem fans over in England or the yeah, Transformers cool, fans. So cool that needs to happen. Yeah, yeah definitely. Let me know All when right. you're here. I will. So, All right, sweet girl. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. To the people at home, thank you so much for watching this video. Go like, subscribe. Go check out everything. And me and Samantha will see you around. Goodbye. And cut.